Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of In The Van With James. I'm sitting here on top of the tallest mountains, somewhere between Merritt, BC and Kelowna, BC, high up in the wilderness. There's not even any cell service here, can you believe that? Listen, today, in this most rugged of environments, we're going to talk about technology. <laughs> technology of the flex machine, in fact. We're going to explain, maybe see, demystify some of this flex technology, uh, talk about the CO2 technology. We're going to talk about how it works, how it can work for you, and why you absolutely need a Trotec Speedy Flex. So in the beginning, there was CO2 lasers. Now, CO2 lasers are, are very cool. These are the ones we're all used to. The ones that make wood or can engrave plastic. Stuff like this, the organic stuff. Uh, then along came the, the fiber laser. But before that, the CO2. Now, a CO2 laser is really cool. The CO2 laser, uh, some people think that we use the CO2 as a fuel, so it, it fuels the laser, you know, to create the beam. It's using particles of CO2 changed into something to create the beam, but that's not true. We're actually using radio waves to excite the CO2 particles inside of a chamber and have them shoot out photons. I'm not gonna get into the real sciencey bit, uh, but basically that's it. We're using the CO2 as a, look kinda like a mirror, bouncing radio waves off of them, uh, forcing the CO2 particles to shoot out a little light photon. Uh, you can Google it, Wikipedia, that kind of thing. Once the uh, CO2 has shot out its photon, uh, the photons kind of they bounce around inside the chamber together. They like to follow each other and uh, If they're following each other uh, They're all coming out of the beam at the same time So when they come out of the beam, that's the beam that you see that engraves your, your stuff So we harness the energy of these uh, of these light photons to engrave your stuff there's a lot of people who think that maybe the fiber laser is made of fiber. Maybe uh, put a little bit of oat bran in there, or, you know, get the, the laser uh, shooting out a little better. But no, a fiber laser is not, uh, it doesn't use fibers uh, to shoot, it doesn't shoot out fibers of things. Uh, a fiber laser uh, is used as a fiber optic cable. So basically we have a, easy way to say it is a, a giant red dot pointer, if you will, a giant diode that's shooting energy through a fiber optic cable. Now this fiber optic cable is doped with, science alert, ytterbium. Ytterbium is a very rare element. I mean, they make so little of it every year. And so they dope this fiber optic cable with ytterbium. Now, when the energy from the diode hits the ytterbium, it does the same thing as with the CO2. It excites the molecule of ytterbium and it forces it to shoot out a light photon. Those light photons follow each other, but they follow each other at a different rate than the CO2. And so what we're left with is a, uh, a different wavelength than the CO2, and this is why it affects the, uh, the parts differently. Um, we also get a smaller uh, beam size with the, the fiber laser as well, which is why we can use low wattage to produce things like metal engraving. Uh, you know, you, you have a 100 watt CO2 and a, a 20 watt fiber, the fiber can actually produce an engraving in metal where the CO2 is just gonna sit there for a while. Now we have the CO2, we have the fiber. Now what's a flex? Well a flex is when we have the CO2 and the fiber in the same cabinet. So we have space for the CO2, we have space for that fiber. And, but how do we 
get them together? How do them, how do we have them work together? Um, well, I'll tell you. There are mirrors which pass the CO2 beam along the beam path to get it to your head mirror, in a, you know, it, to enable it to, to fire down onto your product. Uh, we also need that fiber laser on the same beam path. Well, there are some special mirrors that let through some of the beam, say the CO2 beam, and reflect the other of the beam, say the fiber beam, so that they can travel along the, the beam path. Very, very special. It is, and it's incredibly, incredibly detailed process in order to get these two beams. And this is why we have such a rigid, heavy chassis for it, because we do not want these beam paths to move or, or, or shift around a little bit. So we make sure these beam paths are very, very, very stable. Um, we also have the software control so that it can switch from a CO2 to a fiber on the fly without you having to touch it. So now we know we can have a CO2 and a fiber in the exact same cabinet. So now we can engrave stone and glass and plastic and wood and paper and metal and color change on different types of industrial plastics. Basically, we are not limited when we have this flex. But what kind of a lens do we use? Do we have to keep switching these lenses out? Uh, every time you want to switch from CO2 to fiber? No, we don't. We use a different lens. So now, if you just want to use a CO2, you can use a CO2 lens. If you just want to use a fiber, you can use a fiber lens. But if you want to use them both, we have to use what's called a flex lens. Now, a flex lens is made very special so that it can adjust for the different focal lengths of the different wavelengths of beam. So it's going to be, uh, you know, a little bit longer for a CO2 than it would for a, for a fiber. So the bed automatically adjusts up and down in order to say, I'm working on CO2, I'm gonna drop the bed down a bit. Now we can use this very same lens for both CO2 and fiber. So a CO2 machine, or the CO2 part of a flex machine, you can engrave all of the stuff that you see that's looking the most fancy. Let's call it glass, let's call it wood, plastic, cardboard, you know, painted metal, different types of coated metals. Um, you know, you can get wild with it and start engraving food. You can engrave coconuts like in that video. But the one thing you can't do is you can't engrave metal. You can't take a piece of metal and actually get depth in it. There are ways to affect metal with the CO2, but really the most permanent way to engrave metal with a laser is by using a fiber. Now the fiber lens, the fiber tube in a fiber machine or a flex machine, that will allow you to actually engrave or ablate metal. That's got the amount of power and the tininess and concentration of power in order to actually take away bits of the metal and turn them into pieces of metal dust and energy. Uh, this is what a, a flexes or in a fiber's primary purpose is to engrave metal. Now, it just so happens that fiber lasers can do all sorts of other cool stuff too. So if we have a black acetyl plastic or some kind of dark plastic, the laser will actually color change that plastic and make it lighter and whiter. And if we have a MOPA fiber, now what we're doing is we're doing that even better with more concentration we can make the black plastic even whiter uh, other things for the fiber include um, you can shoot through glass because fibers see clear things just like we see clear things it can see right through them whereas the co2 sees glass as an opaque object the fiber can shoot through glass and perhaps maybe take away paint on the other side of glass or in the in a mirror let's say we can shoot through the glass and take away the bond between the mirror and the glass. Really effective for engraving mirrors. So what markets can we go after with the CO2? My goodness, it's nearly endless. 
it's even hard to explain, really. The markets you can go after, I mean, the first thing I think about is, is signage, of course. Um, signs are all around us. Uh, there's really not many signs you can't produce with a CO2 laser. By cutting acrylic or cutting wood or uh, cutting away paint to reveal a different background or using laminates, using anodized aluminums, you can do tons and tons of different types of signage. But things like parts marking on anodized aluminum or on plastic, this is, this is a huge thing. Leather, uh, I was just visiting a cowboy in Merritt who wants to use a laser to engrave leather. Uh, wood, you can create wood toys and wood business cards. You can create any manner of things out of wood. You can do wood carving with it. Uh, stone, you could be making monuments or you could be doing different types of signs with stone. The, the, it's really quite endless what you can do. But you can't really get to the point where you're engraving metal. And when it comes to metal engraving with the fiber tube or the fiber part of a flex, now we're into a lot of high-end things. We, for gifts, for example, we can be selling a lot of very nice new silver and gold gifts, jewelry. You can start to engrave jewelry now because the CO2 doesn't give you that ability. You can do it very fine and without clamping things down. So if you're using a, a diamond drag on a piece of jewelry, you're spending 10 or 15 minutes figuring out how to clamp this little piece of jewelry down. Whereas now, we place the piece of jewelry down, laser engrave it with the fiber, very quick, very easy. Your setup charge is small as far as the time goes, but you charge big as if you were clamping it. So you can get into these kinds of markets when you have the fiber. You can be creating uh, parts marking on industrial parts, big steel parts or uh, aluminum parts, things that are bare metal. Anything you can't do with the CO2, uh, you can start to create parts on black plastic, uh, you can parts marking, things like this. The fiber laser is meant for taking over where the CO2 leaves off so that really nobody can say, I can't do that. You're, you're taking all the business for yourself and not having to outsource it. And so all my brothers and sisters with the CO2 laser who've purchased it and you're thinking, I need to go to the next level. I need to take on these marking jobs or I need to start doing these beautiful metal giftware, jewelry, things like that metal bits that you can't do with the CO2, I have good news for you. You can actually install a fiber tube into your machine, depending on which machine you have, of course, but in most cases, if you have the Trotec Speedy, I can get a fiber machine into your machine and have you working with your same machine doing both things. I'd love to be able to help you with this. Give me a call, I can, I can help you out starting to get to the point where a lot of the trophy shops and a lot of the engraving shops are starting to get into fiber machines. You see there's a lot of people with CO2, there's a lot of industrial people with fiber and because this is being seen in the industry, the fiber is being spread out there in the industry, a lot of people are asking for this service and if you can't produce this service, then probably are having that person go somewhere else to produce just that one part of your business uh, and if the people they're going to are really excited about their business that might transfer on to the CO2 business as well if you're able to get both tubes in one machine upgrade get yourself positioned so that you're the only one in, in your town that can produce CO2 and fiber jobs then you're going to be the one these people come to as opposed to looking outside of town for somebody who actually has a fiber laser that can produce what you need. So think about that a little bit as you think about expanding your business. Um, obviously it's not for absolutely everyone, but 
think about how you can position yourself to be the guy or the girl who's going to be producing the metal on their laser, okay? Into Kelowna, I want to sign off here for this episode of In the Van with James. As I always say, I want you guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, you're going to see a whole ton of stuff. Not just these In the Van with James videos, but you're going to see some real good shows. You know? And I want you to comment because we read all your comments. We answer all your comments because we really, really want to learn from you guys what you want to see and what you want to hear about. And we also want to educate you even more. I can only do so many of these shows in one month. And so I want to make sure I'm really serving you guys because that's really what it's all about. So from the beautiful Okanagan Valley, I bid you good day.